Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na to ay tuturo ko sa inyo ang concept of voltage and current. So kung gusto nyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. So bago ko sa inyo i-discuss ang pinaka-topic ng video na to which is the voltage and current, ay tuturo ko muna sa inyo ang concept ng basic unit of matter which is the atom. So basically, lahat ng matter na nag exist sa mundo ay binubuo ng maraming bilang ng atoms. Kung pag-aaralan natin ang structure ng atoms, sa loob nito ay matatagpuan natin ang tinatawag na nucleus. At sa loob naman ng nucleus ay meron tayong matatagpuang charge particles. Ang charge ay ang electrical property ng atom kung saan ito ang responsible sa pagkakaroon natin ng concept ng electricity. So, sa loob ng nucleus ay matatagpuan natin ang positively charged particle which is called the proton. Matatagpuan din natin sa nucleus ang uncharged particle which is called the neutron. At sa labas naman ng nucleus ay matatagpuan natin ang negatively charged particle which is called the electron. Ang proton at neutron ay help fix sa loob ng nucleus. Samantalang, ang electrons ay malayang nakakagalaw o nakakaikot sa kanilang pathway, which is called the orbital. So mapapansin nyo na sa atom na ito, ang number of protons ay equal sa number of electrons. Therefore, ang net charge ng atom na ito ay zero or The atom is said to be uncharged. Likewise, kung may enough energy para mag-move away ang electron sa kanyang parent atom, masasabi natin na ang number of protons is greater than the number of electrons within that atom. Or the net charge of the atom is positive. Hence, the atom is positively charged. Pwede rin mag-gain o mag-attract ng additional electrons ang isang atom sa kanyang orbital. And when it happens, masasabi natin na ang number of protons is less than the number of electrons within that atom. Or, the net charge of the atom is negative. Hence, the atom is said to be negatively charged. So, quantitatively, Masusukat natin ang charge using the unit column or C. So, ang 1 electron ay binubuo ng 1.602 times 10 raised to the negative 19 columns at ang 1 proton ay binubuo ng 1.602 times 10 raised to the negative 19 columns. So, basically, 1 electron has the same number of charge as 1 proton. It's just that the sign of the charge of electron is negative to denote that it is negatively charged while the charge of proton is positive to denote that it is positively charged. Likewise, makokompute natin yung one column of charge in terms of number of electrons or protons. So, one column is equal to 6.24 times 10 raised to 18 electrons or 6.24 times 10 raised to 18 protons. So ngayong alam na natin ng concept ng atoms, ay alamin naman natin ng concept ng energy, which is gagamitin natin mamaya para ma-define ng voltage. So energy is the capacity to do work. And the formula for work is W is equal to Fd, where W is work measured in joules or J, F is force measured in newton or N, and D is distance measured in meter or M. So basically, para makagawa tayo ng work, ay kailangan nating mag-exert ng force combined with a specific displacement or distance. 1 joule is equal to 1 newton meter. So to illustrate the concept of work, let's say we have a box at kailangan nating malipat ang position niya from point A to point B which is 1 meter away from A. So para magkaroon tayo ng 1 joule of work, kailangan nating mag-exert ng 1 newton of force sa box para matulak ito from point A to B. Likewise, voltage is also the energy required to move a unit charge from a certain point to another. So the formula for voltage is V is equal to W over Q, where V is voltage measured in voltage or V, 
W is work measured in joules or J, and Q is charge measured in columns or C. 1 volt is equal to 1 joule per column. So para ma-illustrate ang concept ng voltage, let's say meron tayong 1 column of protons which is positively charged at 1 column of electrons which is negatively charged. So they are initially at point A. And since that they have opposite charge, they tend na magdikit sa isa't isa. At since Paraw sila ng number of charge, they are neutral. So therefore, walang displacement. So let's say, gusto nating ma-move yung one column of electrons from point A to point B. At para magawa yun, ay kailangan natin ng energy. Let's say, this energy is 5 joules. This now represent a potential difference from point A to point B denoted by a voltage AB which is equal to the work done by moving this one column of charge from point A to B, which is 5 joules, over the number of charge moved from A to B, which is one column. Or, the voltage VAB is just 5 volts. So that is the concept of voltage. It is the amount of energy required to move certain numbers of charge from one point to another. So we can represent a voltage using a simple battery. So the symbol for battery is this, where the longer line above represents the positive terminal and the negative line below represents the negative terminal. So suppose we have a double A battery as shown. The positive terminal contains excess positive charges and the negative terminal contains excess negative charges. So since ang AA battery ay rated uh, 1.5 volts, it is required to move certain charges from let's say positive terminal to negative terminal 1.5 joules per column para magawa yun, which is the definition of voltage. Ngayong alam na natin yung concept ng voltage, let's define now current. So current is the amount of charge moving past a point per second. The formula for current is I is equal to Q over T, where I is current measured in amps or A, Q is charge measured in columns or C, and T is time measured in seconds or S. So 1 ampere is equivalent to 1 column per second. So, napansin natin na sa definition ng current, meron tayong keyword na moving charge. And in particular, this moving charge are the negatively charged particles which are the electrons. So, current basically is the rate of flow of electrons. So, meron tayong mga materials na good conductor, meaning they allow current to pass through it or they allow the movement of electrons easily. So the common example is the copper wire. So since ang copper wire ay matter, it consists of atoms. So kung check natin yung atoms inside the copper wire, mapapansin nyo na yung electrons niya ay nakakagalaw freely sa loob. Since conductor siya. Yun nga lang, wala silang certain direction or random yung movement nila. Kasi walang external force na nagde-dictate sa direction ng movement nila. So kung i-illustrate natin yung definition ng current, let's say we have a copper wire and there is uh, charges moving from one point to another. So let's say, let's consider point A. Kung meron tayong 6 columns of charges na nagpa-pass through point A, for 3 seconds, therefore, ang current dun sa wire ay 6 column per 3 seconds or simply 2 amps. Yun nga lang, hindi magiging possible yung current na dadaloy doon sa copper wire unless meron tayong external force applied dun sa wire. At ito yung voltage. So suppose meron tayong battery and we want to connect a wire sa battery. So, alam natin na mayroong 
positive terminal at negative terminal yung battery. So, ang i-coconnect natin yung one end ng wire sa negative terminal ng battery. Since ang negative terminal ng battery ay merong excess charge, marerepel yung mga electron palayo doon sa negative terminal ng battery. So, ang movement nila ay magiging away doon sa terminal ng battery. Kaso, dahil naka-flow or walang connection yung other end ng wire, ang tendency ay may ipon lang yung electron doon sa dulo. So, para uh, gumalaw yung electron doon sa dulo, pwede nating i-connect yung other end doon sa positive terminal ng battery. This way, dahil ang positive terminal ay merong excess positive charge, therefore, ma-attract noong mga electrons yung positive charge, yung excess positive charge ng battery. So, therefore, dadaloy yung electron papunta doon sa positive end ng battery. So, therefore, meron ng close path yung electrons from negative terminal ng battery hanggang makarating siya sa positive terminal na to. And this is called a closed circuit. Yung kanina, ito ay open circuit. Dahil wala pang close path yung flow ng electrons. And this complete flow of electrons from the negative to positive terminal of the battery constitutes the current. So we know na ang flow ng electron ay from negative to positive terminal ng battery. And this current is called as the electron flow. Ngayon, hindi natin ginagamit ang electron flow as the conventional direction for current. Instead, we use the conventional current flow. Ito yung opposite ng direction ng electron flow, which is from the positive to negative terminal of the battery. Or ito yung movement ng positive charges. So sa textbook, mostly ang ginagamit ay ang conventional current flow. Anyway, dun sa ginawa kong illustration kung saan kinunek ko directly yung wire doon sa voltage source or sa battery, ay practically hindi natin dapat gawin yon, Kasi ang tendency ay mag accumulate doon sa wire yung lahat ng energy in which the wire may not handle. So ang tendency masisira siya at pwede siyang masunog. So hindi natin dapat gawin yon. So as a summary, masasabi natin na voltage and current must always come together. Kasi wala tayong current kung wala tayong voltage. Kasi kailangan ng external force or electromotive force ng electrons para mag-flow continuously sa isang conductor. So that's the concept of voltage and current. So sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panonood.